Good afternoon, evening, early evening, everybody. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com coming at you with a full case break of uh, hobby edition of 2018 Bowman Baseball. Pick your team number two from jazbeeshobbyland.com. Big thank you very much to all of these folks for getting into the action on a Saturday. There's everybody right there. Mark Glassman, Boombox with the LA teams. Got the Angels in the spot, random. Good luck to you. And Mike Denton, Last Bond Mojo, Nationals. Good luck to him. Good luck to everybody. We have not pulled, ever since we pulled those two Otani autographs from that same case way back when, it seems like years ago now, we have not seen an Otani autograph since. And plenty of Otani, like, paper base, which we ship. All other paper doesn't ship. Um, I haven't seen any since. It's a Series 2 poster. Save that for a giveaway. All right. Good luck, everybody. Here we go. So get settled in, folks. This break takes about an hour and a half. And we'll try to move through this as quickly as possible. Now, generally during breaks, I I like to talk about the specific sport that we're breaking. But in a video like this, it takes so long. We'll, we'll, we'll certainly discuss many different things as we go along. First of all, we can definitely go through some baseball scores for today. Uh, Cleveland, the Indians in Houston beating the Astros 5-4. Giants beating the Rockies in San Francisco 9-4. Phillies edging out the uh, Cardinals in St. Louis 7-6. Dodgers finally winning some games, a couple games in a row. 4-1 over the Nationals. That's game one of a doubleheader. You know, the next one is already starting, and they're already up one nothing on Max Scherzer in the bottom of the third in Washington. The Reds edging out the Cubbies 5-4 to four in extra innings. Must have been a walk-off, bottom of the 11th. Oakland edging out the Blue Jays 5-4. Those are your finals. So, yeah. I can definitely buy a, a cup of Starbucks with my winnings, Eric Jennings. We do, we do enjoy talking a little bit about the wagering, boys and girls. Uh, dude, asking, so what all ships? Man, you just don't like reading item descriptions, don't you? Nothing ships, dude. Nothing ships. That's what it says in the item description. This is just for fun. Everyone's paying just to watch. I'll tell you in a second. All right, this paper doesn't ship. This chrome does ship. That's basically it. Paper doesn't ship. This obviously ships. Zach Littell, or Little, going to Twins, Jared. There you go, Jared on the board early. So that's why I go faster through the paper because they're not sh it's not shipping. Obviously fun inserts like this will ship. through this and look at this a printing plate that'll ship Isaac Paredes printing plate for the Tigers Tiger uppercut that goes to Brett and the Tigers is that new guy mojo still working for you Brett it might be 
There you go, man. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Whoop whoop. Ship to the Dodgers, nice atomic refractor. This paper all the way over here. Let's make myself some more room. Keep the chrome over here. Nice Otani paper. I like those Bowman Sterling inserts. Sometimes those are uh, sometimes those are even autographed. That'd be cool to find one of those today. Actually, paper goes here, chrome goes here. Mixing up my piles already. Matt Hall for the Tigers. All right, there you go. Box number one in the books. There's Otani Paper, and there's Matt Hall. Blue Shimmer to 150 for the Tigers, who also picked up a printing plate and a nice Twins Auto. Slide these over here and onwards to the next box. So my picks, my baseball picks of the day, I had selected the, uh, I went with the Phillies today. They won. So I got some pennies back. Got a couple pennies back. I took the Red Sox today, and I took the Tigers today. Tigers were a pretty long shot, so I'm not too confident in that one. But I think they, there was some value there. I think I could could be a little edged there from my research. They're, they are just getting underway. That Detroit Tigers are in Seattle. And I've got the Red Sox holding on to a narrow 4 nothing lead in Boston over the Baltimore Orioles. I'm feeling pretty good about that. The Red Sox can get to Craig Kimbrell. You'll be able to shorten that game up by an inning. The Phillies already won. Games, other games in progress. What do we got here? Being in the bottom of the eighth in Pittsburgh, the Padres have a 4-2 lead over the Pirates. In the bottom of the sixth, the Brewers are in Minnesota. They are tied at four. Seventh inning just finished up, and the Braves are ahead 6-1 over the Marlins. In the top of the seventh, game two of the doubleheader. Let's play two. Ernie Banks' Cubs are up 7-0 over the Cincinnati Reds. Arizona Diamondbacks leading the Mets in New York, 4-2, top of the fifth. Bottom of the six, we've got the White Sox leading the Rangers, four to three, in Chicago. In the top of the seventh, the Yankees are in Kansas City. They're leading the Royals, five to three. And at the end of the third inning, the Dodgers are still holding on to a narrow one nothing lead ahead of Max Scherzer's Nationals in our nation's capital. How did that happen? Jumping out to an early lead on Max Scherzer, I'll take that. Dodgers have been struggling. I'll take I'll, I'll take anything we can get. Let's see. 
Looks like uh, Max Muncy knocked in an RBI. All right, good for you, Max. All right, here we go. Next box, box two. Good luck, everybody. And there's our first auto. Our only auto is Hobby Edition. Sam Hilliard for the Rockies. So the Rockies. Eric Rager with an autograph. Nice. So now let's look for parallels. Maybe even, well, we got that printing plate. Maybe there'll be like another Super Fractor or something like that. Love to find those. We saw a Harrison Bader Super Fractor ages ago, many, many cases ago. So I feel like we're due. I feel like we're due for another one of one. Due for a one of one or due for an Otani autograph, which would make Boombox very happy. Nice Hunter Green out of 250. We pulled an out of five red chrome Hunter Green a little while ago for one of our guys here, one of our regulars here in the room. And he said he got it graded. And he said he got it back at a pristine 10. So these hands right here, ladies and gentlemen, might take care of your cards. Could be as bad as the Roy no, the Do Royals, I feel like, are Eric Jennings saying, hey, at least your Dodgers aren't as bad as my Royals. I think the Royals are are setting themselves up pretty well, though. They've got some good young players coming up the ranks, I feel like. Marcos Molina. Have I ever seen any multiple autographs in any regular hobby boxes? No. Oh, uh, no, maybe I have. I think usually when that happens, I want to say actually yes. I feel like we'll get a bonus auto, for example, this guy has an incredible autograph, by the way. Um, if we get like a special insert auto, then sometimes we'll see, uh, well, sometimes we'll see a bonus. <coughs> Excuse me. Sometimes we'll see a bonus auto. Those Alfredo Rodriguez had a 250 purple chrome. So that Hunter Green and Alfredo Rodriguez goes to EA and the Reds. EA is the one that got that red chrome Hunter Green. All right, box two in the books. TJ, what's going on? TJ in the house. <laughs> All right, so some nice parallels. We got the Sam Hilliard autograph for the Rockies. And we're on to the next box. We'll take a quick look at the the baseball standings while we're we got we got a lot of time to talk about this. Well, the Dodgers are only uh, four wins ahead of your Royals, Eric. So, so it, I, I guess technically no, they're not as, doing as bad as your Royals, but. We're not that far, not that far behind. <laughs> the White Sox are having a brutal year. They they've only have eleven wins at this stage in the season. 
I think the even the Orioles have 14 wins. Yeah, White Sox are easily probably by at least three or four games the worst team in baseball. So I, th I thought the White Sox were gonna have a. I didn't think they were going to win a, a million games, but I thought they were going to have a bit of a better season thus far than this. They've got some young players. They've got some Carlos Rodones, Carson Fulmers, although I think there's been some injuries there. Lucas Giolito is a you know a former number one consensus top prospect a couple years ago before some injuries. They've got... They got Yoan Mankata, Jose Abreu, so they've got some they've got some players there, but I guess it just really hasn't been hasn't really been clicking. The AL Central is Yeah, Eric James like two worst records are in the AL Central. Indians Yeah, the AL Central is weird. I mean it's almost kind of up for grabs because Indians are only playing five hundred baseball. Well actually they're playing five hundred baseball and they are you know, only two games ahead of the Tigers and the Twins. So, and really the Royals are eight games behind. But the, you know, Cleveland, everyone thought Cleveland's going to run away with the division. They're not necessarily doing that. So, a nice run here and there. Any team, Tigers in Minnesota especially, could make, could make a run at the division. Right, and they, yeah, and White Sox have uh, Michael Kopech in the minors as well. All right, let's see what we got here. Good luck, everybody. I think Clint Frazier's back in action too, right? There's our autograph. It's a red, Tyler Maley. Having a decent rookie campaign for the Reds, EA. Nice. All right, so parallels. Autograph is out. Let's find some nice parallels. There he is, speaking of Michael Kopech. Was with the, uh, he came over, he was with the Red Sox. He came over in the Chris Sale deal, if I remember correctly. And that was a kind of a big prospect. He pitching, I don't know, like over 100 miles per hour on a regular basis. He's got a, he's got a live arm, as they say. Got a lightning bolt for an arm. So that could be he. I mean, he could be stretched out as a starter. I think you can have him in short relief, maybe even close at some point. Yeah, I think the Twins could win the division too. Actually, they made the playoffs last year. They had the, if I remember correctly, they had the most runs scored in the second half of the season last year. So their offense was really clicking. So if their offense continues to click, they've got some young guys, younger players with only just a couple of years or so under their belts. If those guys all just click. Got guys like Eddie Rosario has a high ceiling. There's Daniel Johnson for the Nationals. Mike Denton out of 499. So if those guys start clicking, it's the pitchers, I think, it's really. The starting pitching, if they get that together, I think they, I mean, they, they could have a chance if the Indians keep opening up the window, leaving the window open, they can sneak right through. There's Brendan Rogers. Robert Rohr, what's going on? Oh, is that is Irvin Santana not healthy? Okay, so that's gonna be. I mean, they picked up Lance Lynn, Jake Odorizzi, I think, and then I think that's a. Those are solid, solid additions for rotation rotation depth. Jose Barrios has a lot of potential too.
There's Adam Hazley out of 150. Philly's having a great season this year. I, I, I've, I've seemed to be saying this every other break. There's A.J. Puck, too. And he was supposed to be... Tommy John derailed his season this year. But he's supposed to be a big name. He, he would have been called up, I think, by the A's if it wasn't for those arm troubles. Phillies have been looking great. I, I say this every... I seem, seem like I say this a lot during baseball breaks, but if someone told me in the offseason... Someone told me in the offseason, Hey, Joe, Braves and Phillies are going to be the top of the NL East. I would have been like, you're crazy. I'll bet you. And I'll be like, well, not, well first of all, what, what odds are you giving me? I'd, and I'd probably take it. Because I think you'd be, it'd be plus money at that point if you're, you know... But there they are. Atlanta and the Phillies at the moment are both, uh, I think they're, they've got, no, the, both their games are done. So, yeah, the Braves, 26 and 17. The Phillies, 26 and 17. Which is crazy. Crazy, I tell you. Yeah, the A's actually have a decent line. The A's are 24 and 22. They're actually having a good season. They're they're comfortably above 500. They seem to be playing pretty well. Sean Manea with that no-hitter, he's still been pitching well. You know, he's come back down to earth from that no-hitter, but but he's still pitching well. That's a good thing. Yeah, Chris Davis, Matt Chapman, Jed Lowry, Olson, Matt Olson. They've got a pretty potent lineup. They could put something together. They can, they can spoil it for somebody. They can scare that team. The The problem is, though, is that it seems like the AL West is playing especially well. The Astros are at the top. A couple of games ahead of the of the Mariners, actually. The Astros are 29 and 18. Mariners are 25 and 19. Angels are 25 and 20. And the, and the Oakland A's are 24 and 22. And the Rangers bring up the rear with only 18 wins, but still. To have, like... Four out of five of those teams above 500 and all in the mix to win the division. That's kind of crazy. A lot of teams breathing down the neck of the Houston Astros. Which I don't know. That could motivate the Astros or or that could put a lot of pressure on them. I'm not sure. Oh, was, was Sean Manea a Royals prospect? How did he end up with the A's? What was the, what was the deal there? I don't remember the I don't remember the deal. Oh, there was a Zobris deal back in 2015. I don't, I don't remember that deal at all. All right. Good luck, folks. Let's breeze through this paper. Oh, nice. Look at that. A nice Bowman Sterling autograph, Hunter Green. 57 out of 99. That's a great looking auto. EA Sports. It's in the game. With the Reds. This is a big prospect for the Reds. Big name here. Drafted second overall. He can hit too. I think he's gonna end up pitching. We met him at the at the uh, we met him at the Tops Industry Conference in Phoenix earlier this year. He's a great dude, well spoken. He's an LA guy. Went to high school out here, uh, just about I don't know, 30, 40 minutes north on the four oh five freeway from Jaspi's Hobbyland. So he started as a two-way player. Um, started as a two-way player. And frankly, he was drafted as a pitcher. I think the Reds are going to just kind of keep him pitching full-time. He was a shortstop too, I think. 
So they're gonna keep him as a pitcher. But they said that if he if he went as a uh, the the people are saying scouts are saying if he went as a hitter, he would still have been drafted like in the middle or late first round as a pitcher. High first round, twenty five out of twenty five. Jared Kendall is one of the another promising youngster for the Dodgers. That goes to Boombox Mark and the Dodgers. It's a little Dodger Joe Mojo. Late first rounder. There's big hopes for him too. Um, yeah, so Hunter Green could be could be pretty interesting. People are saying that he's got a good, steady personality. Possible kind of a superstar personality. In terms of being mature enough to be able to deal with, you know, leadership roles and stuff like that. So we'll see. I mean, he's still, I think, probably a few years away from threatening a, a, to get into a major league roster. But part of that, part of that Reds future. Yeah, I do like the dollar sign in his autograph too. He's got a little bit of swag to him. I'm okay with that. There's Blaine and Low to 499. That's for the Twins. Jared with the Twins. Luis Garcia, purple paper to 250. That'll be for the Phillies. Giuseppe with the Phillies. There's Austin Beck. Yeah, him and Nick Senzel. They've got they've got some other prospects too. Uh, the Stevensons. I think there's a Robert Stevenson and a Tyler Stevenson in there. In that organization, you know, and I think they're pretty close to coming up as well. So if they get that, you got guys like you got like a Joey Votto and a hitter like Adam Duvall protecting a young lineup. That could be, that could be really interesting. They could they could surprise people in a couple years and have like a uh, a Braves esque sort of breakout season. There's Francisco Mejia, a big catching prospect for the Indians. We might see him later on this season, too. Should be coming up. Verdugo shuttled back down to AAA. But I think he'll, he'll come back up at some point, I hope. All right, so nice couple autographs popping out of here. And the next box. Oh yeah, Amir Garrett. That's another name there. Oh, and who's that uh, Who's that other uh, Reds pitcher that's pitching right now? Oh, Luis Castillo, right? That's That's another big name for the Reds too. So they got pieces. You know, some other teams, you're like, ah, you, you don't really hear a lot of big names coming up those ranks, but the Reds certainly do. Uh, TJ, is there anything lined up after the moment? No, there, uh, no, yes, there is a autographed hockey puck break. That's going to happen after this. That's lined up. And then I don't think anything else is sold out after that. So we should ha I should have this break done in about another hour or so. A little bit under that. But nothing's filled up after that. Kind of thin on the website. We've been selling out a lot of stuff. So after we do this break, ladies and gentlemen, so I mean, from this point, it'll be about, for those of you watching live, it'll be about another hour or so. After this, we only have one, two, three, four, five things on the website, ladies and gentlemen. Or actually, I will be adding a one box break of Bowman Jumbo. We have that. That'll be fun. So 
So that'll be a, that'll be a fun baseball break to so TJ if you want. We got 14 teams left in finest baseball as well, everybody. 10 teams left in Upper Deck, the Cup Hockey. The Maple Leafs have been spoken for already. We ran the spot randomizer, so that's ready to go. Contenders Optic Football is at 13. Prism World Cup Soccer is at 22. And 17-18 Chronicles Basketball is at 23. Jordan, amount of spots left on that. We've actually moved a couple spots recently on that Chronicles break. For you basketball fans, if you're interested in doing that, if you're in a poops mood, we sold out our last break of Optic Basketball already today. All right, good luck, everybody. Here we go. There's Nick Senzel, speaking of the devil. And Chris Rodriguez for the Angels. Refractor Auto. Not quite the Angels pitcher I'm sure Mark was hoping for, but a hit nonetheless for your Angels. And a spot random spot, 196 out of 499. There he is again. Bowman Scouts, number 16 on the Bowman Scouts top 100. And he, here's the thing, I know, wrong angel. This is the guy, this is the guy that Mark Glassman's looking for. Can't seem to find his autograph yet. Found two in one case many, many cases ago, but so far it's just been this guy, that just the paper and uh, I think we found one card out of 499, a paper out of 499, and that's been it. This guy's been crushing in the minors. He's going to crush his way into the majors soon. Only a matter of time. And that card is gold! Oscar De La Cruz, 59 out of 75. I think that's gold. No? Highlighter yellow, maybe? Gold's out of 50, I think. <laughs> this might be highlighter yellow. Whatever they call it. That card is not gold. That card is highlighter yellow! Goes to the Cubbies. That's Jersey Joe P. 443 out of 499. That's Miguel Cabrera. That's for Brett and the Tigers. The Swarm subject. Oh, you've heard Canary? Wait, well, I'm sure. For the sake of accuracy, I suppose we can look it up on cardboardconnection.com. Canary? the kind of yellow when you after like you have like chew some vitamin C <laughs> there's Brendan Rogers to 150 when are they calling him up I guess they don't really have to at the moment if you look at the uh, the Rockies prospect list there's Logan Allen. If you look at the Rockies prospect list, it's interesting because they've got answers for when and if, you know, Trevor Story is not available anymore for the Rockies, when and if Nolan Arenado, I think who's a free agent at the end of the season, if he's potentially gone, they've got answers. They've got some good young players coming up the ranks.
All right, so that one goes to the Rockies. Eric Grager with that. Slide these parallels over this way. Move that angel over that way. Let's see. Okay, so your parallels for the base. Sky blue out of 499. All right. Purple out of 250. Blue out of 150. Green out of 99. That's retail only. Gold out of 50. Orange out of 25. That's in here. That's in the hobby sets. Red out of five. Platinum one of ones and printing plates. All right. What about... Out of 75. <laughs> no, I don't see it in this set right here. Oh, yeah, you're right. Jared, it's Canary Yellow. Is that a, out of Chrome from the Chrome Prospect Set Checklist? Out of 75, Canary Yellow. Man, there's all sorts of... There's an Atomic. We see the Atomic Parallels. There's one. They're, they're one per box. Those ship. Refractors out of 499. Purple Chrome out of 250. Blue Chrome out of 150. You got Blue Shimmer out of 150. Aqua... Out of 125, that's both in Hobby and Jumbo. Aqua Shimmer, out of 125. Green is only retail only, out of 99. Green Shimmer, retail only, out of 99. We just saw the Canary Yellow, out of 75. That card is gold, is out of 50. Gold Shimmer is out of 50. Orange, Hobby Exclusive, out of 25. As is the Orange Shimmer, out of 25. It's just only in this set right here. Red, out of 5. Red Shimmer, out of 5. Super Fractor, 1 of 1. Hobby and Jumbo, and Printing Place. There you go, Canary Yellow. Canary Yellow. Uh, I think Bowman First Stuff ships. Pretty sure they do. All right, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what ships do. You ready? No paper based ships. There you go. Everything else does. go next box after this box we are halfway there ladies and gentlemen we can we can uh we can be happy about that we can celebrate the halfway point all right yeah this is chrome so it ships i don't think i don't know if this ships i don't think it does maybe i have no idea does anybody know what they got in the mail. Our autograph, Derek Hall, for the fight and fills, that goes to Giuseppe with the Phillies. My guess is that paper doesn't ship. So I, my guess is that doesn't ship, the paper version. But obviously these chrome version, Bowman Firsts, will ship. Oh, the basketball game's at the half, Eric Jennings is reminding me. And it looks like, yeah, at halftime, wow, Cavs up by 20, Eric is saying. 61-41 at the half. Uh, Cavs not dead yet? Everyone's leaving them for dead. I made a series bet on the Cavs to win the series. The, the Celtics, for some reason, they struggle on the road. I mean, recently they've been a lot better, but... But in general, they, they've been struggling on the road. There's Bryce Wilson. are not dead yet. 47 out of 250, Justin Dunn. 
Now I had some uh, to switch gears just a little bit to basketball. I had a I had a prop put a put some pennies on player propositions. Is LeBron James on his way to a a, a triple double? Maybe he's got 19 uh, points, two rebounds, and six assists. Okay, I can see that. Look at this. Nice Nick Williams, 17 out of 25, orange. He can do it. He can get a triple-double. Let's go, LeBron. Let's do it. Well, I'll look at after I look at all these. Out of 125, DL Hall, Aqua. Aqua, right? Out of 125, I just learned all these. Uh, Aqua. I don't, know if, I don't know if I like that color. I would go with, that looks more like a seafoam green. That's what I would call it, seafoam. I should come up with the colors for these. Seafoam. We're going seafoam, Eric. So I think LeBron James, what, what else do I have on this? Do I, do I have LeBron James over 33 and a half? I think I'll get that. Over 10 rebounds. I think I could get that from LeBron James. No, maybe. Over nine and a half assists. I'll definitely get that. I'm in good shape here. There's Dylan Cousins, Sky Blue, out of 499. I can go with Sky Blue. I like that. Uh, no pennies on the hockey tonight. I think the last time I had put pennies on hockey was, I think there was like a, it was on the Golden Knights a couple games ago, where I took the Golden Knights to win. And the game to go over five and a half parlayed that into a couple pennies. So nothing on the hockey. Is that what happened? What's happening in that game? In the hockey game. Is that game? That game is probably over by now. No, four minutes left. Lightning still up three one. Yeah, Austin Meadows was called up by the Pirates. So the Austin Meadows era may have begun. I think we saw a lot of his cards over the uh, over the years and a lot of products, a lot of prospect products. I have some pennies on on Kevin Love for a double-double. Could Kevin Love get a double-double? Maybe. Well, he's got 6 rebounds. Need some uh, need some points though. Over eighteen and a half on the points. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get that. Over ten and a half on rebounds. I could get that. He's got six already. And over one and a half on assists. He's got two assists. Boom. Millionaire. Millionaire. All right, halfway through this break, ladies and gentlemen, we got about another 40 minutes to go. So good luck to everybody. Thanks for hanging with me here. We're almost, we'll be done before you know it. We'll be looking ahead to the hockey puck break after this before you know it. And Jared, I think you got a Twins Auto earlier. Yeah, I will still finish the break, even though I'm a millionaire. I won't be like, I'm rich, and then like ditch you guys. Be just because I placed <laughs> a dollar bet on Kevin Love getting over one and a half assists. I think it was still like minus 115. I could buy, I could buy myself a cup of coffee now with, with my winnings. Half a cup of coffee, maybe. Maybe a gas station coffee. I 
You got. You did get a Twins auto earlier, though. I forget who it was. Yeah, half a cup of Starbucks. And yeah, that's better than zero cups of Starbucks. All right. Uh oh. Patrick saying three, two? Are they coming back? Capitals are like, ooh, minute and 33, 36 seconds left. Capitals scratching back a goal. All right, here we go. Let's get going on this. Let's scratch in our way into this. Yadier Alvarez out of 4.99, and Jordan Humphreys is your auto. These autos are coming out early. All right, Metropolitans, Armando with the Mets. Yeah, it's just like a weird reflection on there. <laughs> there we go. Here's the Jordan Humphreys. Oh, they, they had pulled the goalie, so they had some, gotcha, so an Ovechkin scored. Jorge Ona to 4.99 for the Brew Crew. Sorry for the Padres. That'll be for Brian P. The Yachty goes to the Dodgers. Mark Glassman. Ronald Acuna. Man, the Braves have been playing some good baseball. There's Kutch in his Giants gear out of 499. I actually think, you know, there are some players that look weird in other uniforms. I feel like uh, Andrew McCutcheon, even though he's on the uh, the enemy team, I think he actually doesn't look that bad in a Giants uniform. Actually, I don't mind the Giants uniforms. Because it's, it's like an old school uniform, they haven't really goofed around with it. It's one of the, one of the classic uniforms in the in the league. I don't think he looks I mean I'm sure Pirates fans will will disagree but if there had if you know they may concede that if they had to see him in another uniform that Giants uniform doesn't look too bad on him. But I feel like Evan Longoria not in a Tampa Bay uniform seems really weird to me. So like I'll I'll watch like a, I'll be watching a Giants game, you know, and then I'll be like who? Oh, yeah, right. That's Evan Longoria. He kind of looks weird in that uniform. Shed Long, Atomic. All right, next box. And Patrick Goodwin stating that the Lightning have taken a 
have won 3-2 to take a 3-2 lead in the series. All right, next box. Good luck. All right, we're going to play the play the for real not for real game. Are you ready, everybody? Ready to play? Let's play for real not for real. We're going to go through the uh, the MLB standings as is the current standings according to mlb.com. And you're going to say for real or not for real. Yankees. They are 28 and 13. Are they for real? Is that for real? Or is it not for real? Let me know. Type in the chat, Yankees real or Yankees not for real. NYY, if it makes it easier for you. NYK saying for real. Patrick also saying for real. The Swarm saying not for real. TJ saying sell on that. Not for real? I think the Yankees are for real. What about the Red Sox? Boston Red Sox, 30 and 15. Just percentage points behind the Yankees. Are they for real or not for real? I think they're for real too. Yeah, they're they're got they're they're for real. They're for real. That's pretty easy. Twenty one and twenty two. Tampa Bay Rays. Are they for real or not for real? I think it's not for real. I think they're overperforming. Tampa Bay Rays. Sorry, Rays fans. I think they're overperforming. Not for real. Ooh, Eric Jennings going Yankees. Not for real. Behind question mark on pitching behind Severino. I'm sure they've got the they've got the the pieces. What's scary about the Yankees is that uh, what's scary about the Yankees is that they're actually their payroll is actually kind of small. It's lower than it usually is in like the last five years or so. They're going to be shedding some contract now. They got to pay a lot of guys too, but they also have a deep farm system. They got a lot of young players coming up the ranks. They can they can make some scary moves to really improve that team. All right, and I think the Baltimore Orioles, 14 and 30, I think that's for real. Peter Angelos and the rest of that team, they got to start thinking about moving some players before it's too late, before they get no value on. Well, they already lost a lot of value on Machado. They should have traded him last year. But And there's Daniel Johnson. Daniel Johnson autograph for Mike Denton. Last spot, Mojo. Nats autograph. Thomas Hatch, 134 out of 150. That goes to the Cubs. That'll be for Jersey Joe P. There's Armas Garcia, Atomic. Eric Jennings saying trade Machado to the Phillies and get him to an extension before he hits the market. Would the, are the Phillies going to do it? I've heard rumors about Machado to the Phillies. There's been some some buzz, at least from pundits who think it's a good fit. I think it's a good fit. They've got some young guys they can move. Phillies have money. They're, it's not like they're a small market team. Matt Sauer out of 150 for the Yankees. Who's got the Yankees in this break? Adam Kupperman with the Bronx Bombers in this one. 
That could be interesting. Phillies have a lot of young players they can move. They've got money to sign Machado. They're not afraid to spend. And they're already they're playing well this season. So if they uh, you know, if they add a big bat, you know, and a good fielder in the middle of that lineup, that could be that could be uh, that could be a great move. Because he can help them win, even if he, I mean, they're going to try to get an extension out of him, but. Ah, I see. So the Phillies have a lot of executives with the Orioles history. Interesting. So they know Machado. They know the ins and out of his development, progression, history, medical history, all that stuff. So that could give them the edge to be more aggressive. There's Jason Martin to 250. Could be interesting. I mean, if if Machado decides, hey, I don't want to deal with, you know, I'm on a winning, t I'm going to be on a winning team like the Phillies. They've got a future. He could be the, the core of that future for years to come. And if he feels like, hey, he's got Reese Hoskins there too. If, if he's like, hey, I don't want to deal with, you know, the the madness of free agency. And let's say he gets nervous about. What happened last off season where a lot of players didn't get paid as much as they thought they would. So maybe he thinks, hmm, do I want to deal with that? Do I want to deal with a market that suddenly becomes soft? There's Carlos Correa, 10 out of 25. Or do I see if I could... Carlos Correa, actually, it's out of 25. Let me just leave that up. A little bit lower number. Mike Koontz with the Astros. Orange paper. Maybe Machado thinks, hey, I should make, I should try to see if... The Orioles and Phillies will make a move. I don't think he really has much choice, but if it works out, maybe you can put pressure on that deal to happen. But what would, yeah, what would the Phillies have to give up? Eric Jennings saying Eric, or J.P. Crawford, his name has been mentioned, but there's a, here's the thing, though. The Orioles don't have very much leverage because then the Phillies could be like, well, we're not going to give you the farm. Literally, we're not going to give you the farm. We can ju we'll just wait a few more months for Machado to become a free agent, then we'll sign him. That's their leverage point. Orioles should have moved Machado last year, but that shoulda, coulda, woulda. All, all that notwithstanding, the situation now, what would, uh, what would the Phillies have to give up in order for this deal to happen? Also, I don't think the Phillies are for real this season, by the way, because I think I think they still... I think they're still a little too young. Although I do think the Braves are for reals this season. I think the Braves are for real. I think the Braves and Nationals will be battling for first and second. You would have to think the edge goes to the Nationals just because of their, their the way their team is constructed and the depth and the experience and all that. But I think it will be a battle between the Braves and the Nationals. And I think eventually... The Phillies will tail off a little bit, and they'll they'll be in third or fourth, battling with the Mets in that sort of spot there. But if I'm the Orioles, and if I know I can't ask for the moon for Machado, and if I have to do a deal with the Phillies, who do I want from the Phillies? Yeah, the Jake Arrieta signing, I think, was a smart move. That that shows the intent of the Phillies, I think. They think they can win now. You know, and they got Carlos Santana at first. Nola's great. Pavetta's solid. Velasquez is okay. Eflin's okay. They signed Scott Kingery for a while. So maybe you move Kingery to the outfield. Machado plays short. They're not going to move Hoskins. They're not going to move Kingery. Do you move Mikhail Franco, maybe? Who are their prospects? I mean, maybe you, maybe you got to move.
If I'm the Orioles, I would want I want pitching. Orioles can't uh, seem seem like they could never never develop that. When's the last time the Orioles have, have developed really good pitching? I mean, Arietta maybe, but I mean, he 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 was a different different pitcher years later. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you move like maybe you move. Is it crazy to move Mickey Moniak as part of a deal for Machado and some pitching? There's Otani. That'll be interesting to see what happens. Kershaw will be back in about a week. There's Mikhail Franco. Kershaw should be back in about a week. Apparently, he is rehabbing his bicep tendonitis just fine. That'll be a good, good boost for the Dodgers, I hope. Autograph coming up, purple chrome. And it's going to be for a purple team. Purple Mountains Majesty, the Rockies, Sam Hilliard. For the Rocks, Eric Rager and the Rockies. All right, let's find some parallels. There's Joe Adele. That's a big Angels prospect. Angels rebuilding their farm system. And there's Ian Anderson, 29 out of 50. That card is gold. Out of fifty, it's a third overall, drafted third overall. It's another big pitching prospect coming up the ranks for for the Braves. Braves have money too. They're by no means a small market team, and they've got they've got a brand new stadium, nice new stadium. Maybe Machado looks good. There. There's Colby Allard out of 499. Or Bryce Harper, maybe. I could see if those guys hit the open market. I could see the Braves splashing a little cash, making a making a serious offer. Look at the Braves have a really good, really good team. Does Machado even fit there? Maybe. Uh, can Swanson play third? Does he have the glove for third if Machado is serious about staying at shortstop, which I think he is? And that'd be kind of a terrifying team if you had. You had Freddie Freeman at first, Ozzie Albius at second. You have Machado at shortstop. If you shift, if Swanson going to be shifted over, I think he's got a decent glove. Move to third. Or I guess, who do, who do they have in the outfield? I mean, you know, Nick Markakis in right field. Bryce Harper sounds like a better name out there. There's Francisco Mejia at a 4.99. Man, that could be kind of crazy. You know, Freddie Freeman and Bryce Harper protecting each other in that lineup, along with Acuna 
and Ozzy Albies. That'd be crazy. I think I think I think the Braves would be a team that would do it. I don't think my Dodgers would make a trade. I I don't think they're gonna make a trade for Manny Machado. I don't think they want to move any prospects at all. Three boxes left. I could see them moving for Machado on an open market. It's pretty clear that the Dodgers were were staying trying to stay under the luxury tax threshold. I think they would be, if they were over the luxury tax again this year, I think it would be like the fifth or sixth consecutive year. And at that point, it's like max penalties for the tax, the luxury tax. And I'm pretty sure uh, they would lose draft pick position as well. I, th I think it's like protected up to a top 10, but... but I think, or something like that. I don't know the details on that, but you start losing positions in the draft. You know, so if you had a first round pick at number 20, I think it drops like 10 picks or something crazy. And at this day and age, I think with, with, with players spending, you know, a little bit less and less time in the minors, it's kind of a big deal for a lot of teams. So Dodgers, I think, definitely did not want that to happen. I don't think the Dodgers are going to be moving any prospects anytime soon. But I could see them after, you know, because the luxury tax resets. Once you're under one year, you're under the, under the threshold, all those penalties reset to its, like, lowest penalty. And then it ramps up again. I think the Dodgers would make that move. And I think they would be more interested in making the move for Machado, I think. I think they could do both. I, I don't think I don't think after this year that money is not an op, an obstacle. They could sign Kershaw to thirty five million dollars a year for the next five years if they wanted to, and they could go and sign Machado for eight years at forty million dollars if they wanted to, and they could still get other business done too, and go over the luxury tax, you know, and still pay a little bit less on that luxury tax. It'll be minimum penalties. I think for the Dodgers, Machado is the best fit. If they can get him at short, Corey Seager ha had that had that elbow surgery, so there's that issue. Second base has been kind of a black hole for the Dodgers. Maybe you try to move Corey Seager over to second base, Justin Turner at third, and Justin Turner is not going to be. I mean, his career isn't going to be any like longer than Manny Machado's, unfortunately. Justin Turner's already a little on the older side, so you know you can move Corey Seager to third at some point. I don't know. There's a lot of flexibility that Machado gives, as opposed to Bryce Harper. And Dodgers love positional flexibility, as opposed to Bryce Harper, who I think doesn't really give them a lot of positional flexibility. It's just like pretty much he's out there in right field, or else that's it. And with with Yasiel Puig's cannon of an arm. Wow, nice Christian Pash autograph. Orange Shimmer for the Braves. That goes to D-Mac. It's a big one, Darren. Another young prospect coming up the ranks for for the Bravos. 15 out of 25. Um, so there, so I think Machado is something, a player that they would be more interested in getting. I don't know. I'm not sure what the Dodgers are going to do. Is Harper really worth over $300 million? That's the that's the big question, right? I guess it would be $330 Are you thinking like $30 million a year for 10 years? It's Junior Fernandez for the Cardinals. Eric Jennings with that. Um, I mean, yeah. I think so. You know? I, mean, I think he's going to get like 35. Yeah. 
and 10. 35 and 10 for Bryce Harper. I mean, I think you have to think about how how young Bryce Harper is. I think people kind of forget that he's he already already been in the league for a number of years, but he's pretty young. And with the natural increase in in salaries, you know, I mean, Bryce Harper could could look like a bargain in like another five years. I think, I think Mike Trout is actually up for a contract in like another few years or so. Like, what's what's Mike Trout going to get? 116 out of 125, Pedro Avila for the Padres. So if Mike Trout gets paid big money, Harper might look like a bargain. There's Jesus Sanchez, 23 out of 25 for the Rays. Uh, that's nice orange for Jimmy and the Rays. But Manny, so dude is saying Manny is looking like the big team to go after him is the Cubs. I don't know if the Cubs need a Manny Machado. Where would they put him? They've got good defense, you know, up the middle, right? I don't know if they're going to sacrifice that. I've been hearing, uh, I've, I've been hearing Harper is the is the player that makes sense for the Cubs. You know, like, get rid of Jason Hayward. Put this guy out there. So I don't think, uh, I don't think Machado makes sense for the Cubs. Harper makes a lot of sense for the Cubs. I think there some Cubs fans have been also tickled pink by the fact that Har Harper has made some comments about you know, maybe wanting to play in, in Chicago or something like that. There's Max Fried out of 150. Trout to Philly. That See, that could be interesting. I don't think Mike Trout will, will go to... Uh, I don't think he will. Maybe towards the end of his career he might. I feel like he's pretty loyal to the Angels. And I think I think having Otani has really kind of proved to him. There's Christian Stewart. That goes to the Tigers. That'll be for Brett. I think having Otani also sort of sort of shown Trout that it's like, oh, these Angels are, are for real. You know, like there this is this is could be a place for me to stay. You know. And deliver like a championship. And like sometimes going back home is almost a hassle. You know, if he's on the other side of the country, his boys aren't here, you know, most of his friends aren't here, most of his family isn't here, you know, like his, aside from his, his own personal family, you know, his extended family isn't here, you know, less distractions, you know. So I wonder if he likes being this far away and being able to go back home, you know, but I wonder if he if he likes being that far away, just because there, there's no like distractions there. You know, going home can be a blessing and a curse for like a professional athlete. All all the, all these people coming out of the woodwork. Hey man, welcome back. Can I get tickets? <laughs> you know, like yo, Mike, Mikey, what about, what about some tickets for your old elementary school buddy? Everyone went to that elementary school. Yeah, my kids would love that, man. Come on, don't big time me, Mike Trout. You're back home. You're one of us, Mike. You know, don't big time me. A couple tickets, me and, me and my boy. Yeah, that happens. Yeah, that is true, though. The The fact that the Angels aren't in the playoffs, only been once in his entire career, that, that's that got to be a big, big thinking point. But, I mean... But you know the angel is the angels are the only organization Trout knows. He signed that extension, that big contract, that big contract extension early. He could have just waited and become a, a free agent and then just went off on his own. You know what I mean? So that may, may signal some confidence in the organization. You know, 
so I don't know. I have a feeling that, that Mike Trout will likely stay. Unless the Angels screw it. I think it's the Angels to screw up. You know, if he doesn't re-sign. Sam Banks, what's up? He's saying that he hopes that Trout stays in Anaheim and that Harper stays in D.C. I think Harper is gone. I can't see him staying. I think he wants to he wants to be courted. He wants to get that big contract. You know. I think that's what he wants to see. All right, another Otani there. All right, almost done, folks. Just this box and one more, and then we are done. Um, and there's Jose Siri. Hey, Siri. Another red for EA. All right, so after this break, ladies and gentlemen, is the hockey puck break. I got to take a quick 10-minute a quick, uh, break. Before we start that hockey puck break, I gotta shovel some food in my mouth. I feel like I'm gonna pass out. Sam Banks is like, hey, I like seeing the elite players stay with one team for their entire career. It'd be nice. It just doesn't happen anymore, though, does it? I think, you know, like, I think it's, it's, if the team is not good, if you want, if you're like, you're a ball player, you want to win championships too, right? If the team's not good, I can't blame them for wanting to go elsewhere. 12 out of 25, Eloy Jimenez, you know, if Bryce Harper believes that the Nationals can't just get over that hump, maybe he feels like it has to happen elsewhere. Maybe they don't have the talent coming up the ranks. Maybe there's like a window that he feels is not, is going to be is going to be gone. You know what I mean? So can we ask, can can we say hey Manny Machado, you're an elite player, stay with that, stay with the Orioles. When the Orioles haven't demonstrated that they're they can build a championship team. Kind of rough to ask him that. I think same with Mike Trout. You know, although I think I think he likes the organization, but can you ask him to stay? If he doesn't believe that they're gonna build a championship team for him, there's Alfredo Rodriguez to 4.99. In general, yeah, I'd like to see elite players stay with one one team too. I think it's such a rare thing. It's good to see. I guess it really depends on someone's personality too. For some, for some players, I, I, I think it's I think it's extremely important. You know, I know for as much of you know as as much as there was like a contract dispute with Kobe Bryant here with the Lakers, and that you know maybe that money kind of screwed the Lakers in the end. But I think Kobe Bryant showed a lot of loyalty by saying, "Hey, even though leverage wise, business wise, you got to you got to you got to play that game," but. I think he he always always thought it was important to be in one uniform for his entire career. I think the Lakers also rewarded or rewarded him for his loyalty as well. Um, but I think I don't know. I think it just depends on 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 what a player like Tony Gwynn stayed with the with the Padres through thick and thin. But he just loved San Diego. You know what I mean? There was I think he 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 gave him the hometown discount. He stayed with them through thick and thin. You know, he was always he al always a, a Padres cheerleader. You know, some some guys are just like that. They just fit the organization so perfectly. There's Sam Hilliard to 125. But other pl other players have different ambitions. All right, um, Sam is, is relating that uh, the Cardinals were good when Pools left, though. I mean, yeah, that's true. Yeah, he, yeah, he's not mad. He's sad about that. I wish Pools would have stayed. I I, I kind of thought there, 
I mean, in a way, you guys sort of dodged a bullet, though. Pool's production dropped considerably when he moved to L.A. And thankfully, uh, to Anaheim, that is. And thankfully, um, they had a DH spot. They could hide some of that. I mean, only just this season did he kind of, you know, shed a bunch of weight, try to make himself useful in the field again. So he's been playing first base a lot now, again. And is, you know, hitting decently, but... Yeah, I, in my head, I always see I always see Albert Pujols as a as a cardinal. I think all of his sort of 600 home run, 3,000 hit achievement here has been well received by the Angels and their fans. But it it doesn't ever feel like it's they don't have, it doesn't feel like Anaheim has a claim to Albert Pujols. I feel like Cardinals fans were happier. To see him get 3,000 hits and 600 home runs and then Angels fans were, you know. So, I don't know. It's a weird thing. It's like when, when, when you realize, hey, you know, we see a player's production. They may have advanced statistics that say, oh, okay, this player is he's on his last legs. You know, he's maybe signing him to a 10-year zillion dollar deal is, is, is not good. doesn't make good baseball sense. That's kind of difficult. Player puts himself in a great leverage point too, especially after a World Series. Perfect time to win a World Series in your walk here. It's tough. Business-wise, it's different between business and... I don't know what I would do. I don't know if I would sign Albert Pools. Don't they have a statue out there? For Al Isn't there an Albert Pohl statue out there? There's no statue in Anaheim for him. I don't know. That's that was that was a that's a complicated situation. I think I don't, it'd be interesting to see after Albert Pohl retires. You know, and he's in the Hall of Fame and all that sort of stuff. Maybe he could really someone could really figure out. You know. I think some someone needs to figure out like what really happened. There's got to be there's got to be a bigger story behind that. I feel like I mean not like any conspiracy. I'm not suggesting conspiracy or anything like that. But uh, I think there's got to be like a deeper story behind that, like or or a more complete story on on what led to maybe Pools feeling disrespected or or whatever the case may be, or why he ultimately decided to move on. So. What's up, Jason? Jason G saying his boy started watching these live group breaks and our living room turns into Jaspi Zombie Land. They're just zoning out. Well, this is kind of a, a hypnotic break, this particular one. Hey, but it's better than a lot of better than a lot of other content that's out in the in the TV world these days. Alright, and our last auto is Sean Murphy for the Oakland A's. Josh Plemons on the board with the Athletics. And now let's see if we can close out with some parallels. I'm going to take a quick little uh, dinner break, maybe a 10, 15 minute dinner break after this, and then we will jump into the autograph hockey puck break. There's Andrew Stevenson out of 25. I actually saw him play today. Dodgers had an early game. So that'll go to Mike Denton. And then once I'm fueled up again, once the once the Big Hit Express is all fueled up again, we'll be ready to steam along and steamroll through some more breaks tonight. I think unless yeah, unless Nick has done so already, I will post another one box break of those jumbos too, uh, Bowman Baseball Jumbo. Those are very short, very fun, inexpensive, low risk, high reward kind of deal. So we can play uh, with some of those boxes as well. I know the site is a little thin, but it's perfect. We're at the end of the week anyway, so I think we did a fantastic job this week, everybody as a group, knocking out all these group breaks, so I appreciate the support of this business, ladies and gentlemen. It's always fun to hang out with you guys, too. I think the community is really one of the big things that sets us apart from a lot of organizations. 
that do this do the same thing. What we do right here, that's not rocket science, you know. But I think the community that we build, I think that that is the all important edge. I mean, you guys can spend your money anywhere, right? <laughs> A lot of people do this. There's James Nelson, but I'm glad you choose to do it here, folks. All right, last little stack here, ladies and gentlemen. Good luck. Yeah, uh, John, what's going on? I I feel like we're gonna break everything tonight. Everything that's on the site tonight, I think we'll break, including the cup. I'd be surprised if we didn't, especially before we break for the weekend. Uh, no high tech at the moment. What what you see on the site is all that we have. If we had Bowman high tech, I wouldn't be sitting on it. It'd be on the site. 119 out of 150. Christian Pash for the Braves. DMAC, Otani. For Mark Glassman, we didn't find an auto, but we'll see. And James Nelson. There you go, folks. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. Thank you very much, everyone, for hanging with me throughout this long break. But we did it. We finished it. One, one hour and 26 minutes. I think that's a little bit under than what I said before. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. jazbeeshobbyland.com.